Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to build a chat system using c -sharp. We'll start with a basic chat interface. For this example, we'll use a console application and once we have this, it can be converted to any user interface. Then we'll integrate a large language model to handle user input. By the end, you'll have a chat system that can remember past conversations and provide intelligent responses. Let's jump right in and get started. Before we start developing our chat system, we need to decide on how we're going to communicate with an LLM. In previous videos, we introduced you to Olama and LM Studio, and we noted that you can use Microsoft Gen AI running Onyx models. To keep this example simple, we'll use Olama. Now let's get a quick introduction on Olama's API. Here we're on Olama's website. From here, navigate to GitHub, then scroll down to API documentation. Once you click on the API documentation, you can see all the available endpoints, the ones that we're interested in the chat completion and models. These endpoints provide us the ability to interact with the LLM for our chat system. Now there's a few parameters here for each of the endpoints, but the ones for the chat completion that we are interested in is going to be the model. The model is which LLM we want to use. If you have not viewed the previous videos, please take a moment to do so or just read the documentation of Olama on how to load a model. For this example, we'll use the Mistral 7B version 3. Message a place where to keep track of the chat history. As the conversation is going, we need to send the history of the chat conversation to the LLM so that it has context it needs to generate a good response. If we omit the history and only send the question that we are asking, then the LLM would only respond to our question and not the context of the history. Role defines the message type. For now, we'll just use the three, system, user, and assistant, and we'll go over these later. The stream property will return as the LLM generates a response if true. If false, then the LLM will wait until it has completed its response, then send the entire message back to the user. We'll also use the list models endpoint so that the user has options on selecting the model they want instead of fat fingering it. Here we have a simple console application where we're using HTTP client to access Olama endpoint. We then make a GET request to get the model in our Olama service. As you can see, the content is a bit unreadable. If we go to the Olama documentation, we can see that the response to the listing of the models are clear, and we are only interested in one property, and that is the model name. Here we've created a model response file to hold the results of the model list from Olama. We have the model response class, which is a collection of models class, and that class holds the properties of the model. We also have a model details class for the additional details. We've made modification to our program.cs file to take the results of the HTTP response and deserialize it into JSON object and then convert it into the model response. We then iterate and list the models for the user. So the output would look like this. We have a numeric value identifying the model name for the user to make a selection. Now that we have integration with our LLM and have the models, next step is to get a response from the LLM using the model selected. There is a few changes we've made, and that is to move the model selection to its own method. So let's go ahead and take a look at that. So we just made this into a static method, and every logic that we had previously is already in here. It's just to make it easier. We also added two more new classes. We have the chat response and chat request. The chat request is the one that we're going to use to send it to the LLM. And in this one, basically, we will put our query and the content and the role to assign to it. And because we are sending it, it'll be user. The chat request will have a list of our messages. So basically, this will be our history and we will set the stream into false so that we do not stream the messages. And we will also pass the model name to the LLM. So once we send this request over to the LLM, the response we get back is going to be a JSON object, and we will deserialize that into a chat response. And the chat response basically will have some additional properties 
but the one we are more interested in is going to be the chat message and the chat message is basically going to have the content this is the LLM's response and the role and the role for this one is going to be assistant because that is what the LLM will respond to so let's go back to our program and here I've just set up a very simple message by saying hello Olama and then we get the response back and we're going to go ahead and output the response to the console. So let's run this program. I'm going to choose option 7 because I want to use the Mistral 7B version 3. So here now we got a response back from the LLM and the response is basically hello there and just some other information that the LLM is going to provide to you. So the next step is to make this into a question answer meaning that the user you will be putting an input and then the LLM going to respond then we're going to actually add this information into the history and then we'll continue the conversation so that the LLM can have context of the conversation as it's going. So first we're going to run our application and then review the changes that we did. So let's go ahead and run that. I'm going to choose option 7 as before because I want to use the Mistral model. And now we're going to input our query. And then we should get a response back from our LLM. And we're getting a response back. And we will continue our conversation. Now we're going to go ahead and test the model to see if it can have history because we are collecting this information and sending it every time to the model. But first, let's have some few filler conversations. And then now we're going to test this to see if it remembers my name. So as you can see, it remembers my name. So our chat history is working properly. Now let's take a look at how this was done. So the changes we did was basically move the chat conversation to its own method. So it's going to be a static method. And if you look, we're going to start off with a indicator that the user is going to start the query. Then we read the user's input and then we create a message with the user's role and the user's input. We add that message to our chat request, which is going to be our history. We then we take this chat request and serialize it and then set the chat message into the string content. And this content would be posted to the Olama for the chat conversation. And then we read the response back from the Olama and take that response, deserialize it into a chat response. And here we then create a new message. And this message is going to be the response of the LLM and its role. And then we add that to our history and then we output the results to the user. So if we scroll back up, Here's our chat request, and then we have a loop that will continue the chat conversation. Now we added another message in here. So the chat request is initialized with the stream of force and the model name selected by the user. And then we create a message, and this message is a little bit different. Now we have a role of system, and this system has a message. This system message is going to impact the LLM by giving it instructions on how to act as the user is having a conversation and how the LLM going to respond. So right now we're just telling the LLM to act as an assistant and be helpful. We then take this message and add it on the top and this will become the first request in our chat. Thank you for joining us in this journey through coding AI with C Sharp. If you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe for more content like this. And if you have any questions or thoughts, drop a comment below. We'd love to hear from you. Stay tuned for more exciting videos. Until next time, keep exploring the world of AI.